Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to take a look at identity aware proxy functionality within Google Cloud. Um, and so we're going to deploy a very simple Flask web app um, via App Engine and demonstrate that in the default state anyone is able to access that application on the internet. And so in this scenario, we want to basically say we have a select few users that we want to be able to access this application. Uh, we still want it uh, accessible via the Internet. However, we don't want the vast majority of people to be able to access it. And so we're going to use basically a scenario where we have a web application that has potentially um, very secret uh, intellectual property that a company would want to protect but again not necessarily go through the pain of setting up corporate VPNs and all of that stuff so let's take a look at what that looks like um, we have a hello world kind of example for this app engine uh, application and it's pretty simple to get this up and running but first we're gonna need to create a project within Google Cloud so I'm gonna do that now uh, I'm gonna basically just create that uh, and call it snooze IAP test 01 and add it to my billing account as usual and go ahead and create that. Okay, so the project is now created and I will be able to see this if I actually just run a G Cloud projects list. So I need to set my active project, of course, to this project and I do that by doing G Cloud config set project and then paste that in. Cool. Uh, so now basically what I'm going to do is go through this um, step by step, which of course will be in the uh, description for this video. And we're going to basically clone the source code for this Hello World app. And I'm going to make a couple modifications. Uh, I'm going to change the port and then just change Hello World uh, to something a little bit different um, to kind of fit the scenario of this video. Uh, but anyway, I'm going to go over to my uh, terminal and I need to, of course, install a bunch of stuff as usual. Okay, so now the components are all up to date. Um, I'm just gonna do a G Cloud projects list, just so you can see, uh, and then I've copy and pasted the next command, which is basically just taking a look at this project here. Um, and again, I'm just following this pretty much uh, step by step. I'm going to create a new app within this project. Um, I don't actually have to specify the project ID because I use the G Cloud config set project command. Um, so what I'm going to do is go ahead and G Cloud app create and place that in US West 2 and give that a couple of minutes. Okay, so now that that's ready to go, I'll just move on. Uh, basically, what we're going to want to do is um, install the App Engine Python component for uh, G Cloud. And so the way that we're just going to do that is obviously copying and pasting this command. If it will actually copy. There we go. Run that with sudo. And yes, we will continue. Okay, so that's all set. Uh, we can go ahead and, of course, download our source for the Hello World app. And I will do that in the, uh, let's see, go to my videos directory and then IAP, and then just get clone that. Whoops, correct the command here. and cd into that directory. Cool, so you see all the files in that directory and we can go ahead and make a couple modifications. So if you actually cat the main.py file, um, you'll see that it's just the return hello world. I'm just gonna change this to something, um, not a huge deal, don't really need to change it at all, but just so you can see. Um, I'm going to basically call this super secret intellectual property. All right. Uh, and now we're actually going to run this locally so you can see what the app looks like before we deploy it. Okay, so in order to actually run this uh, on the local 
system just to get an idea of what it looks like. I'm going to create a virtual environment uh, and then we're going to activate that. Of course, the prerequisite is that I need to have the virtual environment plugin. Of course, install that as root. Okay, so we're going to start the virtual environment here. And then, of course, we need to activate the virtual environment. Okay. So you'll see that we have the requirements.txt. We'll go ahead and install the requirements.txt. That'll probably require sudo. Oh, it won't. All right, sweet. Okay, so we've installed the requirements.txt, and basically what we can do now is just run the application. Um, I'm going to change the port for Grins. Uh, the way that I'm going to do that is just modifying that main.py file again. Uh, so we'll just do nano and change the port. I'm just going to change it to 8081. Um, and this is not necessary, but I think I had something else listening on 8080, so I'm just going to allocate a different port. Uh, so again, just run the python main.py. And now I can just go to this in my browser. Okay, so that is what the uh, application is going to look like once we have it running an app engine, except for it won't be listening uh, on my local host. It will be accessible from anywhere in the world. Uh, and that's what we're going to actually use with Identity Aware Proxy to limit that to specific users. So with that said, I'm going to uh, control C to quit this and we're going to move on to the next step, which of course is to deploy the app with gcloud. So from within the uh, hello world directory, we can just copy the gcloud app deploy command, uh, if it will copy and run that. And so what that will actually do is kind of package all of this up and send it up to our project um, that we have our, uh, let's see, do you want to continue? Yes, I do want to continue. Okay, so it's going to, as I mentioned, it's kind of going to take the um, project name, snooze IAP test 01, and uh, then it's just going to have that as kind of like the prefix to appspot.com, and that's going to be what we actually use to access this quote-unquote hello world app. Uh, and of course, it's slightly modified, so we'll see the super secret intellectual property um, once this is fully deployed. All right, so uh, as it says, we can just run the gcloud app browse command that'll show us all the actual app engine apps that we have. Um, so this basically gives us the uh, address that we'll use, um, and again, when I use this, uh, we were running this app locally, so I basically use my uh, localhost 127001, um, and then the port that it was listening on, which is 8081. Of course, this is no longer listening on that uh, because I control seed the virtual environment. Actually, that reminds me, I'm going to type in deactivate, to deactivate the virtual environment. Um, and then I'm just going to navigate to that uh, URL that it gave me. And as you can see, um, I can access that without any issue. It didn't ask me to log in. It didn't ask me to do anything. So just to kind of drive this whole thing home, I'm actually going to do the exact same thing um, from a computer that is on an external network. So not on my home network. It's, it's actually connected to my Wi-Fi hotspot uh, via my phone. And I'm gonna I'm gonna navigate to the exact same URL just to show you that I can access that uh, anywhere from any device. Okay, so I am on a separate network. This is not my home network. I'm actually tethering from my cell phone right now. And I'm just going to go to snooze-iap-test-01.appspot.com. And of course, you can see there's no authentication. Uh, it just shows me the web app um, that we have deployed. So let's go ahead and add some authentication to this using the IAP or Identity Aware Proxy. Okay, so in order to enable the Identity Aware Proxy, uh, we're going to go ahead and go over to Security and then Identity Aware Proxy. Um, and then we basically need to enable the API. Um, and once that is enabled, then we can go and actually set this up. So we're going to configure the consent screen, which basically will show 
the user um, an error message um, if they do not have permission and it will also give them the login prompt um, if it does require that. So I'm gonna do an external uh, user type because I'm gonna use a Gmail account and not uh, an account that has an email that belongs to my organization. It's much easier to create a Gmail account. So I'm gonna make the application type internal, which means that you have to be in my organization to actually modify the scopes of this. Um, and for my app name, I'm just going to copy the, uh, let's see, G Cloud App Browse. I'm gonna copy the name here. And my application logo is going to be, let's see, a picture of some pizza, why not? Um, support email can be admin, that's fine. Add scope, authorize domains, da, da, da. we'll add gmail.com. And that should do it. So now that we're back on the Identity Aware Proxy page, we can actually just go and uh, turn this on via this radio switch here, so turn on IAP. Um, it's basically saying it will only allow access to the App Engine app by members listed in the permission panel. So we're going to go ahead and turn that on. Um, and immediately, if I switch over to the uh, machine that I had on the uh, network that is basically outside of my home network, um, you'll notice that I am going to get a login prompt when I try and refresh the page. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and switch over to that machine and show you what that looks like. Okay, so we have Chrome here. Uh, I'm not logged into Google or anything like that, and I've just cleared the browser history and cache as well. So I'm going to navigate to the App Engine URL, and it's going to ask me to log in. Um, so I'm going to log in as my test user, which is snooze test01 at gmail.com, and enter the password. Okay, and so what's going to happen is it's going to give me that error message, and we have our nice pizza icon that we up uploaded. Um, but yeah, it's telling us that we do not have access. Uh, it then is giving me my username that I attempted to log in with, um, the URL, and then basically saying I should contact the admin uh, if I need troubleshooting help. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to clear browsing data once more. And then I'm going to go over to the other machine uh, and add snooze test zero one as a user. So before we uh, move on, I just wanted to verify that uh, the user type is set to external, right? Because my test user is a gmail.com user and not a snoozesecurity.com user. Um, and so in order for us to provision access to a Gmail address, we need to accept the user type of external. So we're back at the identity aware proxy uh, configuration screen. And what I can do is actually click on this level, the app engine app itself, uh, and then basically go over and add a member because we're trying to add snooze test zero one. So at gmail.com. And basically we want to make this user um, a web app user. So we're, we're basically setting them as a, uh, identity aware proxy web app user and so i'm gonna hit save here and that's really it so now you can see um, that we have this new field here on the right hand side and it has our users that are authorized to use this web app and uh, that is limited to snooze test zero one at gmail.com so i'm going to go back over to the other system on a separate network and try and hit that url um, once again all right, so I'm going to go ahead and paste in the URL. And it's going to prompt me to log in once more. Get my credentials ready. And there you have it. Um, it used my authentication and compared it against the IAP secured web app user list in the uh, console and it verified that I am who I said I was, who I logged in as, and of course it ultimately gives me access to the web application on the back end.
Um, so that's really it. There are obviously some more powerful things you could do with this, but I thought this would be a quick demonstration on the identity aware proxy and its use cases. And hopefully this was informative for you and uh, I'll see you in the next video.